The speakers are broken in our it's, studio because like it is every single time we do any kind of show and Tyler's gone and I'm the only one here. Things don't work. Everything Tyler is plugged sabotages in. sabotages everything. It is plugged in correctly, allegedly, and it just won't work and I don't know why. We have waveforms though, so at See, least you yes. have that. But I believe that any Oilers Nation radio that is hosted by Liam Horobin needs to have its own self-sung intro. Yes. Because Did we not, not get a song today? A somber song? I think no. a lot of people because notice. today is incredibly sad. That's what I said, a somber song. I, no, We're I at a funeral. I can't think about anything. My pain has got worse and worse as the day I, goes on. Can't stop crying. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Yeah, that's, uh, that's one way to put it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Okay, we got a bit of a, a ragtag group, I guess you could say, because there was very few people in the office today, obviously. Tyler BM on their way to Vegas right now. If the others had won, they'd be on their way back here for a parade. But that's something that unfortunately yeah, is not happening. So here we are. We have Dan. Oh, Rick also just forgot the show was today. So that's good. We have that's Dan. How sad he was. Yes, I'm here. Captain. Aye, aye. Captain Felton. Kennedy. Hello. And Matthew. Pleasure to be here. Also known. As, is it a pleasure to be here right now? Well, no. I feel like I would almost <laughs> want to talk about. It's an honor to be here enough, is what you were saying. Yeah. Hey, the draft's coming up. The draft is coming up. I couldn't care less. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I like, I like second round Nothing picks. to smile about, Walsh. Can they get another yeah. ball wakey under the belt? So, Alex okay. Marullo has abandoned the Arizona Coyotes. What do you guys think? Um, Jesus. Why didn't it happen sooner? Yeah. We're just trying to avoid the big elephant in the room here. Yeah. I don't know if we can avoid it any longer. <laughs> we need to talk about Liam, anything We else. talked about kickball for like 28 minutes. I know, but it just felt like in that moment, I know I would. It, like, so defeated. But I tonight, know. I don't actually feel defeated. I just feel sad. That it's the all constant sad. sigh. You're right. We're not avoiding this. What could have been? Yeah. <sighs> Let's get into Sorry, it. Ken. Delicious debate. Oh, just going to mock. One hour of us being trapped in our feelings. We're going to sit in silence debate. and groan. Brought to you by Boston Pizza. Here in Canada, summer is short, but the list of reasons to visit a patio are long. So make every occasion a patio occasion at Boston Pizza at a Boston Pizza near you, Canada's favorite patio destination. Fishbowl, anyone? Ooh. Yeah, That's I was actually it. on the hey, or, 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 or two or three. Pizzas. Then go ahead, tell us that one was. Yeah, uh, let me search it up. But yeah, I think tomorrow, tomorrow Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. We're going to have more information on how you can claim this. I have the thing here from Courtney Terrio on Twitter. Uh, Wednesday, June 26th, to grieving hockey fans, local oil fans, and those in select markets countrywide should keep an eye out for the biggest, the most uh, saddest pizza delivery in history. So it's going to be delivery. Interesting. I don't know how this is going to work. Uh, after game six, BP went and yeah. Basically 30,000 pizzas think, tomorrow, Wednesday. I was just going to say, I think the delivery word was just as an inclusion there to kind of Tantalized. Most likely. Yeah. Also, I think they had a truck on Jasper Ave last night saying to kind of, we're going to give away like coupons for wings to cure your sadness. Can't confirm. I think that was. Did you grab one? No, I was just so You're sad. Still sad yeah, so... I didn't know what to do with myself. Fair enough. Well, let's get into the sadness. <laughs> Today's <sighs> delicious debate. We'll start with you, Dan. What went wrong for the Edmonton Oilers last night after they fell in game seven, two to one to the Florida Panthers, who raised their first Stanley Cup? Is that the question? What went wrong? That is my question. What oh, went that's wrong a tough. With the last that night? is a tough. Uh, I just. It's a, no, no, and that's fair. Get into it. <laughs> I understand, and and it gives us a wide variety of answers to be able to give you. Uh, my answer, the number one issue as to why the Oilers lost Game Seven, is the Florida Panthers just plain and simple outworked them. Uh, the second period, I think, was a real kind of microcosm of the entire game for the Oilers. It was a frustrating game as a fan. Uh, you know, that offense that was going for games four, five, and six just didn't get going last night. And, you know, I, I feel like I've said it over and over on this show. You just yeah. you come to expect it. And when it doesn't get there, it, it leaves you feeling a little empty. So yeah, the Florida Panthers played a way better team game than the Oilers did. I think their own team style. Captain. Um, Honestly, game of inches. Uh, the offense just was so close to being there. Um, if Bouchard would have hit the uh, the net instead of the post, I think we're talking about a different game here. Yeah, truly. Mm -hmm. Kennedy, what do you got? I think we saw the same issues that we saw, like, you know, game one and game two, where, you know, passes are going into guys' skates. It's hitting bodies. It 
bad bounces, you know, puck luck, I think is a thing. So we just weren't having it. I don't know. The ice was kind of shit again, too. Yeah, it was a billion degrees down there. By the sound David of it. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah that's exactly. Crazy. So it was like all that just it kind of is a recipe for disaster. But I mean, it wasn't as bad as we it could have been. It really could have been a 5-1 game for all we know because of how many times the puck almost trickled through the blue line but, or yeah. through the red line. But. but to the point of the ice issue, and again, like both teams have to play on that ice. Mm-hmm. And I really think that the Oilers, you have to know that that's going to be an issue. So you can't leave it to a comeback. You can't leave it to the last minute to have to yeah. no. to have to battle back into it because there was a certain of I, I felt a certain amount of it in game five where when the Oilers were up in Florida, you just knew that the puck was going to be bouncing for the Panthers. Mm-hmm. And that's a barrier that they have to get that offense. Mm-hmm. You didn't need it. And so, it, yeah, you're right, Kennedy. It, it, it is frustrating, but mm-hmm. it's also like it's just another reminder as to why you needed to strike early and strike off. Exactly. Often. I did think the ice was better than game mm-hmm. five. First, I thought it was but, worse. No, I don't think I it don't was know. worse. It, I thought in game five, there's way more puck handling problems, mm-hmm. but it definitely was an issue. And I mean, mm-hmm. when you're playing games on June 24th in South yeah. Florida. Yeah. You should come to expect it. That's why the NHL should move over their schedule. But that's uh, another delicious debate. Was wrap us up. Well, I think Captain Felton kind of said what I was thinking. It was a game of inches. Uh, there was just moments where the Oilers could have scored and they didn't. It was just kind of missing pucks. Pucks going wider than that. Bobrovsky making some key saves. You know, Skinner, just the puck got by him, and it was literally just a game of inches, and whoever can just kind of... It was a really close game. It was a 2-1 score. It's not yeah. like one team blew out <laughs> the other. Maybe the Panthers did outplay us. Uh, I, I don't know. I thought it was a pretty even game for the most part. I thought both teams had a lot of possession, created chances. It's just eventually one team had to win. Yeah, that is true. I think, for me, the way the game started and Florida was forechecking so hard, it really mm-hmm. felt like the tone was being set there and the Oilers were just weathering the storm, which they did a pretty mm-hmm. good job of, to be fair. I think the shots about 6-6 six, six after the first period. But for me, that's where it kind of went wrong for them. They weren't able to take over the game early like they had in the previous three games. I know a couple of short-handed goals can be mm-hmm. fluky, I guess you can call them. You can't rely on them. Although they did have a couple of chances. To I, I did feel like the first goal that Florida scored kind of reset the Oilers and kind of brought them back yeah. down to earth and settled the emotions and kind of brought into the game. And That's usually when Stu locks in. Yeah, and is I he think- lets in a one goal like that and then it just snaps into it i think that's why we got that goal from Yanmark yeah. really quickly but from there it was just kind of uh, i think it, in zach's article was a war of attrition basically right it was just whoever can get the next goal probably wins and uh, game seven it's not gonna be easy oh, yeah. that's i it. just felt like i feel like the oilers were i don't know it's uh, it's tough to i was waiting for them to see how the first period went and that's kind of what decided the fate of it all because that was what the keys were for game six. That's what it was for game five is who could win the first period. And it seemed to too bad. Though. We didn't, That's we didn't. The thing. That's we the thing. Back even. And I, I was so happy. We weathered that storm. And uh, like you said, shots were six, six, both teams had a goal. I'm like, okay, let's take this next step in the next period. And sadly it just didn't go our way. Like even that second goal, um, the, it was Bark? No, Reinhardt scored. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, we had a chance on the other end. We just missed it. And then it comes back down right. the ice, back in our net. And it's just like, did give me a little bit of flashes of earlier in the season. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, dude, like I'm not putting that on Stu. No. It's, I just, I was going to say, I just, I, I feel like, and I, and I, I, I'm trying to articulate, I'm trying to find the words, but it just felt like the Oilers were maybe better individually in moments. As, as like each player, you can look at each player and say, oh yeah, that was a good moment. That was a good opportunity. But again, it just comes back to that team thing. And we talked about it on, on Oilers Nation yeah, every did. day today, where it's like, you want to win and you want to lose as that team. And, and it mm-hmm. felt like, and again, I don't blame, and I said it on Oilers Nation every day, and I don't blame Nobby for going to that nuclear deterrent in the second period. But mm-hmm. I just, you know, I, I, you, you feel like mm-hmm. this team was at its best in games four, five, and six when it was rolling four lines yeah. and the Florida Panthers had no answer for any of it. They had no answer for any part of that lineup and Brown and Yanmark shouldn't have been a part of the storyline, but they were because they were able to roll that forward, that four line depth. 
They yeah, I think the mm-hmm. the Knobloch decision to go with those essentially five players, I, so hard to argue against it because those five literally won you a game in this playoffs yes. in game two against Vancouver. But in that same breath, I feel like the team has been so much better and deserves to play. And it felt like, I said this on O&E before, but to reiterate, when those guys went on the ice, the others were just having to take a shift off until those guys were ready to go. Mm-hmm. There wasn't mm-hmm. that team aspect in the third period. And you're looking at a team that had a guy like Warren Fogel who was on a four-game point through. Brian McLeod had scored goals in this playoffs mm-hmm. recently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I get it. Like you don't want to play that fourth line maybe as often. But again, that third line was the only one that had a goal for you. They Cody were- CC and Matias Jamar connected for a goal. And Cody CC, Mr. Game 7. He, he played Sam good. Like, yeah, he's really too. solid. He is good. He- I, I wonder, <laughs> do you think I saved his roster spot or is he done? I know it's a conversation I for a later I mean- time, but... Oh, well, the season's done now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, we heard it on Saturday when Tyler's are good, um, but, you know, I think Dallas, Vegas. one thing, I guess, just a, fan, a statement to the fans and people of the Oilers, fans of the Oilers, you can't take the sample size of a playoff run to determine how good or bad a player is. And that's the same with Broberg and Holloway, too. Like, Philip Broberg I, played I, yeah. 12 good games for the Oilers. Is that many? What did they come in? Game four? Yeah, he went to game six, so he played eleven. Played eleven games for the Oilers. Yeah, and granted, very good. Played yeah. really well, but I don't know what that like. He has a contract coming up this summer. That's why he's kind of part of the conversation. The Oilers aren't going to overpay him like two million or something. Like no, that. He's probably no. Gonna he like came in and did what he needed to do. Yeah. yeah, and that's a lesson we needed to have learned from two thousand and six because after that run, and I mean, of course, there was the shambles that is leaving Pekka, Pekka leaving Pronger leaving, and and the mess that that was left behind from there, but. The team then overcompensated on a mm-hmm. Sean Horkoff contract, yeah. and that ended up really kind of souring his relationship with the team and the fan base I going forward. That. It's not yeah. it's not fair to those guys, and we're seeing it with Darnell Nurse right now. We're gonna see it with Evan Bouchard in a year. It's you know it's it, they're signing these contracts because they're offered it to them, and so I think they can re-sign Bouchard this summer. Yeah, that's all. That'd be an interesting, interesting. Well. and I believe it'll be around ten million. I think people yeah. lose their like, minds. We don't even have a GM true. right now. Yeah, that's true. That's, <laughs> a, that's another conversation to have. That is a thing, and which I, one of you is putting in their application? I, I've seen like there's nominate a list my dad. Of things that the Oilers need to do in the next seven days. It's like buy out Campbell, get a new GM, do the draft, trade CC, all these things. Find I don't know even know who's available in free agency. Sam Reinhart. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Do you know Jumps. the crazy part about Ryan Hart? Uh, Chris Knobloch was his coach in Kootenai. Hmm. Told him everything he knows. And then Chris Knobloch gets to the final and Sam Ryan Hart gets the game-winning goal on him. That's crazy. It's sad. Poetry. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ken Holland's contract runs out in six days. Hmm. Huh. Second delicious debate. I just got a couple of thoughts on it. I didn't. Ask, I don't think you were on the show when I asked this, Dan, but I asked Zach and Coom on o e Hopefully this isn't just a replay of that show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we yeah. do have other things that I'll... I'll be different. What is his legacy in Edmonton? Was we'll start at you and we'll work down the line. I think his legacy five, five years. Five years. Uh obviously there's the Ken Hall detractors, the ones who will say, well, his legacy is failure because he didn't win the cup. But honestly, he helped turn this team into a perennial contender every year. This team has been in the playoffs every season that he's been at the helm, which is an improvement under Peter Trelli, where it was very wishy-washy. So I gotta be honest, I think if I would to like kind of rate, his, yeah, give us a rating. A rating of his legacy, I'd give it a six point five out of ten. What if it was a letter grade? A letter grade, I'd say a <laughs> B minus. B minus, Kennedy. What is your? Uh, assuming uh, this is the end of him as yeah. a GM, which all signs would point up being. What are your thoughts this. on? I know, on like, yeah, the cup is the end all. That's usually the goal, but I mean, for it's hard to win in this league. So mm-hmm. the runs that they've been on, this is everything that I could imagine. You know you know, working in it being a fan of it. So, and, you know, he's done some hard moves too, and he's found some really good players. Like I think of like bringing Klim on and, or like even the Tyson Berry at home th- trade, like um, I would, I would probably give him like a B really. So Ken Allen's first year was 2019, right, Dan? 1920. Mm-hmm. 1920. Yeah. So his first year before we get to the captain's thoughts, he lost in the qualifying round. To the Chicago Blackhawks, three to one. They then got swept by the Winnipeg Jets. They then made it to the Western Conference Finals. Lost to Colorado, obviously got swept. So he got swept twice, which is kind of crazy. Um, lost to Vegas last year, six. 
and then won the West this year and obviously lost well, in game seven. Like I think that was kind of Ken Holland's goal always with the, with the Oilers was not just to win the cup. Obviously, that's the ultimate goal, but his goal was just to make this team a team that makes the playoffs year in after year in after it's, mm-hmm. you know, we didn't really have that for how, like, Decade Decade darkness. Exactly. Right. The Oilers yeah. have made the playoffs once in the five years prior yes. to that. Yeah. And they obviously lost in seven mm-hmm. games, which then and maybe you capped him. I, well, I'll remember it because it was only 2017, but that game last night kind of felt a little bit like that game seven against the Ducks, but because it ended 2 1. It was yeah. just like the mm-hmm. Oilers couldn't get any like major, major chances. Teams are very different, of course. Mm-hmm. Oilers inexperienced. Anaheim had a guy like Corey Perry who was in his prime at that point. Captain, what is your thoughts on Uncle Ken and his five-year tenure here? Where he made the playoffs every year. Yes. Um, I think that's the heat. Four and a half. (laughs) I mean, the playing series was a weird year, so I think everybody gets a little bit of a break for that. Um, My thoughts on Uncle Ken is he got the bad taste of Shirelli out of our mouth. Yes. Um, He had to deal with those contracts that he had at that start point. And he built himself a contender from that. I, I, I know a lot of people are going to crap on him for not making as many moves this year at the deadline, but I think that was actually the right play. I think that he could see the chemistry in this team. He could feel out the relationships and the way that Nobby had that room. And I think he realized I'm just going to add to this team and not subtract like he did last year with the swap for Ekholm and Barry, which was also great trade. But now I think the fact that Ekholm had that full year to grow here um, truly paved the way for our, our arrival at the cup final. So my letter grade, A minus. Oh yeah, what did you give the letter grade? Sorry, Kennedy. I gave him a B. B, B minus, mm-hmm. B, 6.5, A minus. A minus. <laughs> Dan, what are you thinking? Well, I'm glad you get to ask me this question here because I didn't get to answer it on yeah. Oilers Nation every day. And I, I really do think that people, you know, and we're, we're humans and so recency bias is a thing. Uh, but if you transport yourself back to the start of Ken Holland's duties, it really was a mop up cleanup role for him to start getting rid of Milan Lucic and, and getting rid of that albatross of a contract. And it just kind of snowballed from there. The guy came and and kind of put a stamp on it right before COVID hit. We had the Cassian signing. You had the Miko Koskinen signing. You got all kinds of things. Or so that wasn't him. That was, Athens, that was really, yeah. but yes, I think yeah. trade, the Mike green trade. I was really happy about that team that we had mm-hmm. put together going into that playoff run. Same. And then everything, including the world got flipped on its head and call and Holland had to pivot and change. Well, so, Go ahead, Wilson. I was going to say, he also had to deal with the lo- loss of es- Oscar Clefbaum out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, sorry. Adam Larson leaving, mm-hmm. too. Like, there was a lot of these good defensemen that the Oilers had, a nice little core on the back end that you could have built around. And they just had to, you know, unfortunately, you know, Larson left because due to his father. Um, and then Clefbaum's injury. Sorry, Kennedy. We lost him for free. That yeah, we, we of, lost two good defensemen for free, basically. Yeah. And so, so, I mean, like, overall, you have to give him credit because. Every single year that the Oilers were within a sniff of the playoffs, he loaded up somehow, whether that was the Evander Kane signing previous, it was the Corey Perry signing previous. He was working on ways to, to tweak things. Connor Brown, bringing him into this team. I know it didn't work out, you know, in hindsight until the playoffs, but that that kind of a transaction doesn't mm-hmm. happen without Ken Holland. Uh, you don't see hey, other teams signing a guy like that. Sorry to keep talking about 06, but that was like Michael Pekka that year. Yeah. He did nothing for us during the season, yeah. and then playoffs came. He turned it on. Yeah. So it just so the, it's those intangibles that Ken Holland brought in that, uh, you know, Rick is a guy that sits on this podcast every single week and tells us, you know, give Ken more credit than we do. And I, I so I will say my, my rating would be a B plus. Should add. Oh, that yeah. he brought in Dmitry Kulikov, who is now a Stanley Cup champion. Mm. Why would we ask? Uh, can we turn <laughs> off Roger's mic? Too many Kulikov. That's a yeah. two-minute jail. Roger's, Roger's still in jail. You know, maybe got Kim, Ken a little credit on that trade. You're and still, we in lost Kulikov. Sam. still in jail. Yeah, You're still in jail. Still in jail. Yeah, I've, I've been reminded that plenty of times in the streets. Good, every, I'm after gone. every game, somebody says, "Did you pick the stars in six? I'm like, "Yeah, you did." Wise, wise. Are you a chef? 
because you're really good at stirring that pot. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> well, I'm all right. Huh? Rick, you can't come back soon enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Rick's currently <laughs> in his feelings. Sorry, That's why he's not here. That's why he forgot. <laughs> Uh, he's yeah. Had to do a wellness check on him. I'm last just night. teasing you guys. By it's the way, good. we did see Rick last night at Greta. He was very silent. He did not say a word. And we for hugged. somebody that talks all the time. A lot yeah. of grunting. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out a win percentage thing here, but it's hard to say because I'm not going to math. But um, <laughs> so in 2019, obviously 2020 was different. Um. 2018-19 season, the Oilers played 82 games, finished seventh in the Pacific Division with 35 wins and 79 points. The year after was obviously the COVID year. Mm -hmm. The Oilers played 71 games and had 37 wins in Ken Holland's first year. So probably on track for, I don't know, 10 more games less than mm -hmm. say they win six of them. So that's a that's significant upgrade over what they, yeah. what they have Prior, yeah, progression. Uh, just to continue the conversation on game seven, and we'll kind of move on from there. Connor McDavid won the Con Smythe last night. The first yeah, player since that's our boy. I can't remember. James Chagier, two thousand Um, to win the Con Smythe, he was part of a losing team. Sixteen out of the seventeen people voted for him to be first in the in the award, and he obviously won. The one player that, person that didn't was a uh, Ryan S. Clark. A good man. I'll mm -hmm. let you all know that he's a very good man. Uh, he voted for Bobrovsky, I believe, was his first place vote. But Jim I just Matheson, hope he has a good sense of humor because people <laughs> yeah. are going to be laughing at hey, him a little bit. Jim Matheson voted for three Oilers. He was the best. I mean, yeah. David Hyman and Bouchard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good man, Jim. Uh, I mean, he won it already. But Kennedy, McDavid, was he deserving of the award? Of course. Like, he does so much. He's a, like an absolutely unreal player. Um, he deserved even more than that, but that's besides the point. Um, but yeah, of course he did. Of course, like there's no words to put into what he means to this league. Even he is an absolutely unhinged kind of player. And you know what? We're going to see him do the whole damn thing one day. So 42 points. Was, yes. That was what he, and that's crazy. He, was that tying Lemieux? Um, I don't know if it tied Lemieux, but to give some perspective, Matthew yeah. Kachuk had 22 and led Florida in the playoffs. That's really 20 wow. Points Point points. Well, everyone was saying Bobrovsky should have won it for Florida or some sort Bobrovsky of Bobrovsky in the playoffs finished fourth in goals against um, with a three point, uh, sorry, 2.32. And I mean, take these numbers for what they're worth because UC Soros was first with a 2 0. Mm -hmm. So, well, and then uh, he was sixth in save percentage. But even the thing, though, too, is like I, 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 you see a lot of people saying, well, it should have been Bobrovsky or something like that. I disagree. Bobrovsky turned it on in the last two series for sure. Give him mm. that. But uh, I think Tyler made the point or I saw that on um, Twitter today that it's the MVP of the playoffs, not two rounds or the finals. And yeah. I know people mm -hmm. even were talking about, oh, well, it's recency bias for Connor getting two four point nights. And it's like, well, the entire playoffs, he still had 42 points. Yeah, forty-two points, yeah, and only that's insane. people are that's insane. Like, this is legendary status. I mean, he he's seeing his dad in the crowd and just go yep. bonkers for how happy he was. So for his cool, kid. For his, like that exactly. was such a cool reaction to see. And I mean, anybody's also going after Connor saying, "Oh, he he should have been respectful and came out for that trophy." It's an individual award. He stayed. He waited. He shook everyone of the Panthers players and staff. And then waited at the bench mm -hmm. and shook every one of our team's hands as they went down the tunnel. He was there for his team. Exactly. So exactly. he's there for the team award, not the individual. And it was yeah. just it was funny to people say, oh, he's so classless for not accepting the award. Like they're acting as if they've been in that situation before, <laughs> watching their team, you know, lose the Stanley Cup and then being named the Conn Smythe winner. Call me David. Like, if I was in that position, I'd leave the ice as well. Like I would not want that award. I wanted that the Stanley Cup. His con smite is meaningless. I just have to say, poor went out for the NHL intern that had to tag McDavid on the shoulder and say, Hey, you've won the con smite oh. trophy. Would you like to go back out again? <laughs> like that, that person's having a bad night, bad night. That guy yeah. probably gave him the me or Connor probably gave him the meanest mug. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's <laughs> and like, tough spot to be in, but somebody had to let him know. As yeah. Felton was saying, a lot of people were saying, Oh, in the last two games, you did nothing. In game six, you had no points. In game seven, where was he? Like, it's it's not the cons the cons right isn't for the last two games. It's like Tyler said, the whole entire playoff run, 
round one, two, three. I mean, McDavid was crucial in that third round against Dallas, scoring some huge goals. And oh, what was the OT uh, winner? Uh, damn Sorry. right. Double. Uh, how double. many points did he get in what game four? Was it five? Or he got- oh, he had f- eight points in back to back games. I think he had 10. In three, yeah. Which is so Connor did his part, and who he, else? <laughs> well, no and I think it's telling too. If you look at the voting, just yeah. quickly, you just see it's McDavid, People McDavid, made. McDavid, and mm-hmm. it's Barkov, Barkov, Barkov. It's not even McDavid, Bobrovsky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's just it was a silly, a silly little kind of throwaway. Maybe it was the wrong ballot. Maybe he ended the wrong ballot. Also, I just want to add, and this is a little off topic, but ESPN apparently missed uh, Barkov. Raising oh, did the you cup. not see it? It was <laughs> terrible. So basically, no. I'll try and describe it. So Barkov, I actually turned the TV off yeah. I yeah. this morning. As he should. He obviously lifted the cup. Uh, sorry, he had the cup from Batman, and then he was holding it by his chest. <laughs> he skated by the one camera that had yeah. him with Batman, and then they didn't switch quick enough. So there was, in the moment, no moment of seeing him lift the cup above his head. They just quickly cut after, and it was just like, come on, guys. Like, mm-hmm. it was unbelievable, but. That's enough from uh, anyone else. Would you have any final thoughts on game seven or just the run, Dan, before we move on to our betting segment? I just hope everybody, once the pain subsides, once the hurt is, uh, is dulled somewhat with time, everybody just takes some time to really reflect and, and remember the, the good times that were this playoff run because there was a hell of a lot of them. And, uh, and I know everybody in this room has that mm-hmm. moment and everybody that's listening to this has that moment. So just take some time to remember that too, because as much as this stings, that was a heck of a good time. And we're going to be right back here Actually, next year. Sorry, Dad. Uh, I actually want to add in uh, the buildup and anticipation before game seven around Edmonton was something mm-hmm. I've never seen before. Like just before everything got kind of started at Greta, I, I went down to uh, Rogers Place Ice District to see the lines for the Moss Pit. It was insane how they were wrapping around blocks and it was about a five minute walk. Like there's because the Moss Pit, there's usually two lines, one on 104th Ave and one on the 130. 103rd. And it was unlike anything I've ever seen. And even before I got downtown, like just throughout the day, because Dan, we ran into each other. I was mm-hmm. one of Tim's with my buddy. And just like there's everywhere you went during game seven in Edmonton, there was an Oilers jersey. There was a aura around mm-hmm. the city, as yeah. it's been saying. Like, I've never seen it. It was something weird. Like just every corner you turn, there's an Oilers jersey. The last going on your 63 walk. days yeah. has been absolutely infectious in the city. <laughs> I love it. And I'm so tired, but I'm so proud of everything. Yeah. The real question right now in this room, who's taking down their car flag? Has anyone taken no. down a car flag yet? I don't no. have one. I'm, mine's still up. Ooh, my I house is lit. See there, uh, Liam. So, you, well, you would be in great danger. <laughs> Were there, I, every time I park, it's like, nope, go back yeah. inside. Were there yeah. any superstitions that we kind of tried to st- stay yep. to for yep. the second I had- game? I had my lights on the front of the house. We have three light bulbs that we can mm-hmm. change the colors of, and those were set to a different color of set of lights for each win. I've been and making these, me and my best friend, Gina, have been making these bracelets for everybody and handing them out this friendship bracelet kind of thing. And mm-hmm. I uh, stopped wearing them and they started winning and they battled back. So I did not wear mine last night. Um, I'll admit it just on game seven. Uh, my boy, Derek Ryan did not play great. Oh, wow. We'll, we'll see what happens next I season. thought that was your superstition for a second. <laughs> no, no, no. no just, DR, I, I hope you're back. But man, the legs kind of started to fall apart there, buddy. I love you. I'm really sad that we haven't seen a goal from him in about three months now. And mm. I had a post on Twitter about a granny in a cage. And I'll let granny out until Derek Ryan scores. Granny's not doing so hot right now. Granny's still in the cage. Granny's just uh, was not a mask. Yes, okay, sir. was control your language because we're going on to the bet. Three, six, five segment. Okay. Okay. This betting segment is brought to you by Bet365. Whatever the moment is never ordinary, ordinary at Bet365. Download the app today and use the promo code Oily Bonus. Was you know the promo code? Yes, Oily Bonus. You just said it. Oily Bonus. Thank you very much. You passed, okay. Was. You passed the test. Welcome to the program, Matthew. You did a good <laughs> job. Okay. First question. This is a. We don't have the usual gambler here in Tyler, so we'll play this game a little bit differently. We usually do a guess the line, but instead what we'll do is guess the team. Let's do a couple here. So actually the first one is guess the division, but there's a futures bets over on bet three, six, five right now. So this is for next season, the division of the Stanley cup winner. So the odds are the the best odds are plus two forty, which means if you put $10 down, you would win $24, okay? 
And then the worst odds are plus 300. So if you put $10 down, you win $30, okay? So here's what we're going to do. As a group, we're going to try and guess what order they have put them in. So fourth, third, second, and first, okay? So any ideas what could be fourth? These are the four divisions. What's Toronto's division again? Metro. Metro. That's the Atlantic. 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 I would put Atlantic. Metro right. fourth. Yes. Okay, so what was the final guess? Metro or Central? Metro, Metro. Met- Metro. We're Metro. guessing fourth? Yeah. 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 I'm going to guess the Central. Central? Sorry, to be different. You're Central? Metro. I'm going Metro. Central. Central plus oh. 300. Oh. Okay, okay. Okay, so in third last, third least likely, I said plus 280. So Central is off the board. Was, what is your guess? Oh, it is the Metro. Metro? It's got to be the Metro. Got to be the Metro. 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 Sticking back with Metro. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go Metro. The Pacific. Wow. Oh, no, I'm One oh, thing no. to consider when you're doing this is think of the bad teams. There's the a Metro lot of is going to the oh, next oh, season. Sure. Yeah. 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 is going to have yeah, Calgary, yeah, yeah, yeah. San Jose, Anaheim. But I was thinking more of the good teams. Yeah. In that one. Yeah. I thought there's true. more good teams. Well, the, the gap isn't too big. Plus yeah. 280 for the Pacific. So now we'll guess. Who is the winning one? Most likely, according to Bet365, to have the future winner of the Stanley Cup. Let's just guess what number one would be. So it's either the Atlantic or the Metro. I'm going to guess it's the Atlantic just because we got the performer winner in that mm-hmm. division. Yeah. Okay. Let's just stick with Metro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just switch it up and do Atlantic. Okay. It hasn't been right yet. It's going to be one Metro! of Metro! Who said Atlantic? You were wrong. It was Metro. Oh my God. I went with the Metro the whole time. (laughs) The Metro booze. So the Metro was plus plus 240. Atlantic is plus 270. Pacific plus 280. And the Central plus 300. In other words. Avs? Yeah. No, no, no. Avs in the Central? We're talking about the Metro. Metro. (laughs) Have you ever taken the Metro? (laughs) No, have you? I've taken the LRT. No. Does that count? No. <laughs> oh, they're, I thought they're the same. Okay. We'll do the. Uh, oh, was. We'll do, 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 do the. Who bet 365 is the best odds to win each division? Okay. And then we'll do the Stanley Cup. Okay. 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 So we'll start with. We'll start with the Metro. Who do you think the plus 200 they are? Who do you think the Metro has the most as a favorites right now to win the Metro division? Metropolitan division. I'm going to guess. The Toronto Maple Leafs. That are in the Metro. That's not the Metro Division. The New York Rangers. I'll read all the The New York Rangers. Okay, so it's um, New Jersey, Washington, the Rangers, the Islanders, the Canes, the Blue Jackets, the Flies, and the Penguins. I've heard Metro so much on this podcast. (laughs) My brain wanted to think Atlantic. I'm sorry. (laughs) But yes, I'm going to say the New York Rangers. Okay, Captain. Um, I was also thinking the Rangers, but uh, I might swap that to the Canes. Matt Rempe fans. The Canes. If you're a Matt Rempe fan now? <laughs> of course I am. Uh, of course. Drop in the brand. <laughs> My bracket this year was supposed to be an 06 repeat, and it was kind of almost that, so I was going to say the Canes. King? Canes King. or Canes? Canes. Canes. Matthew? How about the New York Rangers? It is the Carolina Hurricanes. Woo! Plus 200. Okay. So load of um, <laughs> let's do Don't the Atlantic. Me. Stay in the East. So you have Montreal, Florida, Toronto, Buffalo, Boston, Ottawa, Detroit, Tampa. Hmm. Senators. Senators, ride. Let's go. <laughs> I'll go with the Bruins. Bruins? The Linus Olmark is, is no longer a Boston Bruin boss. Mm. Swayman is. Swayman is. I'm sure they can bring back. That ain't swaying me, man. Uh, <laughs> should be all of him. Yeah, yes, he should be. <laughs> Let's go, Sens. Okay, Dan, who's your guess? Sens. Sens? <laughs> no, I'm going to guess the Leafs. Leafs, Kate, Kennedy? Um, anybody but the Leafs. Um, I'm going to say Tampa. I don't know. It's Florida. It's Florida. I, mean, I can't on. believe nobody. Oh, Florida. Florida. Duh. I honestly thought the public would go with the Leafs. Leafs are second at plus 30, 330. Bruins are plus four, four, 450. Tampa is plus 600. Because I'm fairly certain if Red memory Wings serves thousand. correct, that usually when you win it, your odds drop because yeah. it's what the hardest yeah. thing to do yeah. is repeat. Well, maybe, back, back they, back. Uh, hmm. maybe their odds drop for the Stanley Cup. Could be. Consider that on our next round. Oh. Okay, mm-hmm. let's get to the Central quickly. Uh, is obviously Nashville, Winnipeg, St. Louis, Minnesota, Utah, Chicago, Colorado, and Dallas. Captain, who's your winner? 
I mean, I'd love to say Utah, <laughs> but it is, is not going to be Utah. It ain't Utah. Um, I'm actually going to say it will be. I think it's going to be Colorado this time. Okay. The way, uh, the odds are plus one seventy five for the favorite. By the way, Kennedy. Uh I want to say the house, but I'm going to say the Jets. Jets. Okay. Was. Dallas Stars. Go. Waz's favorite team. Dallas. Oh. I've got to go with the Stars. Stars? Yeah. Very good drafting there. You're correct. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dallas, Dallas was mm-hmm. one seven. They got nice jerseys. So the Pacific. I'm not going to read you out the teams. You all already know them. Was who's going to win the Pacific? Plus one. Yeah, Edmonton Oilers. Kennedy. Edmonton Oilers. Captain. Anaheim Ducks. No, oh, one. Edmonton Oilers. <laughs> Yeah. This is the odds. Yeah. I think it's the Oilers, but I think Vegas is close. Uh, plus 180 for the Oilers, plus 220 for Vegas. Vancouver plus 375. Interesting. Interesting. After winning the division, they're third <laughs> to win <laughs> well, it again. <laughs> it kind of does make a little yeah. bit of sense. The Oilers have such a poor start. Vegas isn't what they're supposed to be. Yeah. Okay, the last but not least for our segment presented, betting segment presented by Bet365. Enjoy the bonus. Stanley Cup odds. Who are the favorites? Plus 700 to win the Stanley Cup. So do we have to pick two? Just pick your winner. Oh, okay. Uh, so who do you think matchup. it'll be? No, no, no. Okay. Another matchup. I guess I'll tell you the matchup after. Okay. Based off the odds. Dan? I think it's the Edmonton Oilers. Captain? Your 2025 Stanley Cup champions, the Edmonton Oilers. <laughs> Kennedy? The Edmonton Oilers. I'm going to go off the board and say the Florida Panthers. Yeah, you Jail. probably shouldn't have done that. Is the Edmonton Oilers, and they have it. Wait, actually? Yeah, plus 700. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, I was listening to the radio when they said it was the Panthers. Oh, no. It okay. is the Oilers on Never bet mind. 365. Um, the Stanley Cup final they have would be the Oilers versus either Carolina or Florida, above 900. Mm-hmm. Stars are also plus 900. Colorado, New Jersey, plus 1,000. Rangers plus 1,200, Leafs, Canucks plus 1,500, Whitley, Vegas is plus 1,600 behind Vancouver. I have a question about this betting segment. Better be a good one. Night, <laughs> so, like, since now we're in the off season, are we going to discuss, you guys can discuss other sports potentially? I think we're going to have to. Yeah, <laughs> just it's, it's, through. It's, there's a big fight this weekend in, in Vegas too, right? So I, With what? Well, McGregor's not fighting in the UFC in, uh, this weekend. He's supposed to. I was very disappointed. He's oh, totally. Yeah. My uh, that guy, that guy, did I tell you guys about my summer parlay? That no, you didn't. But I'm going to move on to the next segment. Uh, It was a a bet three six five parlay. Who was it? Better be quick. So my summer parlay was Mavericks to win, Oilers to win, McGregor to win, and France to win the Euros. And all of them. Basic yes. (laughs) Oh, maybe France probably will not win the Euros. Breaking news: Waz hit on one of his four parlay. I don't think it's going to happen. Like McGregor, just what he got injured. Yeah, he withdrew. Yeah, shin injury. His toe. Oh, no, I thought it was baby I, toe. Was it toe? Baby toe. I th- I'm fairly certain it was his baby Interesting. toe. Interesting. I thought Anyways. he showed a picture of it. You ready, Dan? I've always been ready. Oh, I mean, no, I'm not at all, but uh, we'll try this. <laughs> what's, what's the Dan okay. game? So we're going to play Dan's 3v3 game as I move around here. Dan, do you want to explain the rules? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm making it up as we go here. I've really honestly just come up with this as we're sitting here. Uh, we're sitting next to one. So I thought it was uh, only fitting that we should do a Dan's 3v3 uh, super fan draft. Oh, so, okay. Okay. so what that is, is it's not going to include the fel- Captain Felton, of course. You can't draft <laughs> Captain because he's going to be on the panel. Uh, but you're going to be able to just draft any fans from this season that you can think of that kind of, you know, play into your memory bank, whether it's you know, some people that spent some time in the moss, but I think are going to be at a bit of an advantage over the rest of us, but uh, just people that you saw mama Stanley banjo guy, McMullet. There's the list just keeps going on and on except for again, captain Felton. So we're going to be drafting three of our Oilers super fans. And then uh, you're going to be able to draft. Oh, wait, what was it here? Oh yeah. Uh, one thing that you're going to do or one suggestion that you have for Euler fans to be able to just do something else to get over, overcome this game seven pain. So just some activity, you just draft an activity that, uh, that people can do. I, admittedly, again, you can tell just by the name or the idea that I came up with there at the end, that this is a, 
terrible idea of a draft, but we're going to try it. You guys are all now being challenged. The draft order as selected by the list randomizer, as I was talking here, is going to be Captain Felton, myself, Liam Waz, and then Kennedy. So, okay, mm-hmm. before we get to that, yes. just have to let everyone know this segment is presented by Millwood's Golf Course. Millwood's Golf Course is the official golf partner of Oilers Nation. At Millwood's, you will find private club conditions for under $100 greens that are always immaculate a relaxing driving range with music playing and lots of targets and a fully stocked pro shop with lots of local clothing lines be sure to follow at millwoods gc for some above average content the gang over at over at millie loves golf but they love to laugh even more how to book go to millwoodsgolfcourse.ca and click book online what day is the golf tournament? September first now. August thirtieth. It's August thirtieth. Yes. Okay. It's that weekend. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is. It's a great time, by the way. <laughs> August thirtieth. It's gonna be amazing. I'm not happy with myself that I'll be missing it, but it is what it is. Dan, you have to admit that. Can you kick us off? I can. Yeah. Uh, Captain, who, what was the order? Sorry. Captain Felton gives us the uh, the first pick in the inaugural Dan's three v three super fan. Is draft. it just Oilers super fans, or can it be like? Any other teams that we know too? Sure, yeah, let's let's know. let's, let's like seven maybe. Let's, yeah. let's do that. Any super fan you fair, want, fair, you draft okay. you you draft them. They do them. All right, but at least there has to be an Oilers super fan. On sure, team. let's do it. Okay, let's right. roll. I'm starting off with the man, the myth, the legend, banjo guy. Right. Banjo guy is a good, great, good one. Uh, yep, great mm-hmm. pick to start us off. Uh, I'm very glad that I get to go second because I'm going to draft it. Mama Stanley, of course, we wanted to bring real Stanley home, but I've got Mama Stanley on my team. Over to you, uh, Liam. You get the next pick. Super fan. Well, I mean, if it wasn't for a super fan, we wouldn't all be sat here today doing this show. So I will go with a man that doesn't paint his face or dress up as anything for the games, but an Oilers fan. But Jay Downton's probably a super Aww. fan, right? Yeah, yeah uh, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you uh, guess. You guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But Wanya over him. Is it? Well, go ahead. Well, yeah, that's, that's your your is. me. Who is my super fan? Is, you you're have to you're tell next. Us in a minute. <laughs> the uh, the very wise pick by Liam of yeah. the CEO of the company <laughs> uh, gets him on the board. Was you're up next with your pick in the super fan draft. Well, I'm gonna go with the guy who should be sitting in the seat, Rick. It's a good pick. Hey, he's on the Oilers store. That is the guy yeah. from the yeah. Oilers store. That's fair. If it's you true. are not familiar with Rick's face from following and listening to this very podcast you're listening to right now, you're kind of weird. But I'm still a fan of you. Thank you for listening. Kennedy, you get the next pick, next two picks in the Super Fan Draft. Um, yeah, I'm going to pick our, I guess, co-CEO, creator of Nation. And also, when Nation started was after the 06 run basically so wanye shout out um i get a second pick um i honestly i the guys that did the like like oily otters or whatever and they kept switching it up i don't know their exact title but they kept switching it up and having the signs or whatever Hmm. they had the um uh, orca in a net they had the otter in a net i i like those guys a lot so they're my next one perfect the signs guys, the oily boys, oily the oily boys, boys signs yeah. guys. Yeah. Perfect. I will. I'm just trying to type all this down so I can send it to Waz <laughs> later. Uh, you're back to you, Waz. Speaking of which, and also remember, you do get a bonus pick as well at any time of an activity to get over the game seven pain. All right. Waz, you're up. <sighs> okay. So second up here, I'm going to give it to the samurai guy that I ran into the moss pit. He somewhat thought he was friends with Tyler Uremchuk. So I texted mm. Tyler, do you know this guy? And Tyler said, no, I don't know who that is. And <laughs> the Samurai guy was very adamant that he knew Tyler. And I think he did slow pitch with him or some, something like that. Samurai guy on Waz's team. Liam, you're up next. I mean, I can't believe this man's still on the board. He drives from Strathmore. Oh, every yeah. Single yeah. Game. Sorry, but I'm trying to help you. McMullen. <laughs> what a man. McMullet is off the board now. He is on Liam's team. I am going to grab uh this one's a pull at the heartstrings. I'm gonna grab Mike Stelter and the Stelters. That's yeah. a good oh, show. Yeah. oh, you can't go wrong with that. Stelters are on Dan's squad. Uh this is my game, so I get to grab some of the fun ones. Uh and then I'm also going to grab 
uh, one Oilers VR guy <laughs> from I the uh, was waiting. From the Damn early, it! From the early days of the, so uh, of the Moss it's Pit, so good. Oilers so VR guy is, is is going to live on forever he was in my every memory. Game. They and he's, our uh, yeah, and he's on my team, Liam. You can't have Oilers VR guy. Who are you going to add? Did to you get a second pick coming again? Skip? Skipped. Captain, I did. I'm sorry, Captain. Okay, I'm, okay. I, I, this is the problem with trying to keep your own game going <laughs> and keep track of everything at the same time. Captain Fair Felton, enough. you get two picks because okay. I skipped right over you. I'm sorry, buddy. All right. Well, we're going to do two fans. Or no, we're going to do two things here. Um, so to distract ourselves from uh, oh, the smart. sadness, smart. Uh, I'm going to be going to a movie. Ah. Oh. And that movie will probably be Wolverine and Deadpool. So, so oh, true. So I can't good. wait. So. Okay, perfect. Deadpool and Wolverine making you feel better after game seven. Exactly. Who is your next super fan pick? Ooh, um, I'm going to save that one to the end because I don't think anybody will take it. But how about the uh, the Kansas City Chiefs guy that stole all that money and <laughs> now in jail? Oh, the one that makes every other super fan questionable. <laughs> The I can't remember the name of him. I was trying to think of it as I was something riffing there. Wolf it's yeah, it's yeah, the KC Chiefs Wolf fan, yeah, uh, who was robbing banks <laughs> as they went along the following the Chiefs into different towns. Incredible story if you haven't heard it already. Great pick by you, Captain Felton. In spite of my skipping of you, I'm sorry <laughs> for that, Liam. Now that I'm going to skip myself again, you get to add to the team of Jay and McMullet. See, I think I have three great options, but I only have one pick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got a couple of travelers. I got someone who's here every game, bangs a drum, super fan Magoo. Okay. Good show. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. I mean, he fires yeah. people up. It's, it's awesome. Hey, he does a great job in there. It's, uh, it's hard to go wrong when you got a guy that gets all those chants going along with Hunter. Uh, Fun I've fact, he gets his face paint by my neighbor. What's up, Nation citizens? If you like that video, then you need to be subscribed to the Oilers Nation YouTube. Podcasts, live shows, exclusive interviews and analysis, everything you need from your favorite voices at Oilers Nation. And you don't want to miss any of it, so hammer that subscribe button.